All right, so after getting the boat back, we um, realized that our teak hatches on the top are actually leaking. And all these years ago, we didn't realize they were leaking. We always had canvas covers on them. And, you know, we're at the boat show and we have all the covers off, so it looks good. And what was happening is the seams between the teak are leaking. Uh, and unfortunately, the core underneath it and inside of those teak hatches really needs to be replaced. So today, I'm actually taking a page straight, straight from Mads on Set Life's video. I saw him make these temporary hatch covers that he put on his boat where it was about a month that he had to leave it outside while he rebuilt or, or ordered or whatever it was he was doing, but he, he took these off. Uh, and he built this sort of temporary hatch. And I thought, you know what? This isn't a good opportunity. I can do the same thing. That way I can take the hatches off. I can rebuild them in my workshop here. And um, and frankly, I don't have to deal with, you know, trying to bring them in and out with the weather or et cetera. And I can sort of take my time. Uh, I really want these to look good. And I've never done teak, uh, replaced teak and seamed it. So, uh, you know, it'd be nice to have it on a table and, and really be able to do the work. So... I'm trying to think of a way to do this lightweight. I think I'm going to use these uh, these half-inch um, thick pieces of mahogany that I actually initially bought to put inside the core on the forward deck when we replaced part of the actual deck core on the boat. I have a couple pieces left over. I think I'm going to use that to build the frame. I'm just use a quarter-inch thick ply on top of it. I'm going to do a thin layer of glass over the whole thing just to keep it waterproof. So away we go. So I got my little helper with me, and we are going to build a hatch, aren't we, baby? But first, somebody wants to get a do-rag on like Grandpa, so I've got hers here. Do you like having the do-rag on? Turn sideways, let's see. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Here you yeah, so here's what I'm going to use. It's actually tongue and groove, but that's fine. I'm going to end up trimming it. But it's just half-inch mahogany. That'll keep the weight down a little bit, and it's tall enough to build the frame and still give me a little peak capability. So I'm actually going to do a really fairly simple construction. I am going to peak the roof just a little bit on this, on the hatch cover, um, just to let water repel off of it since it's going to be sitting on the deck and not be a good seat. So essentially, that's going to be it. Really simple, thin plywood on top, and then a layer of glass over the whole thing. All right, so we got some, uh, let's see, what do we do? So I went ahead and got that frame epoxy together, and I didn't record it, but I went ahead and just put uh, eighth inch thick plywood on top of it, real thin stuff like Luan. Uh, it's really just there for me to be able to glass over the top of it. Um, so my little helper in the back was informing me that today she's going to be really good and she's going to be my chef, and she asked if I teach her how to bake. So we are off to the produce store, the produce market. And we're going to see if we can get some blackberries and maybe do a blackberry cobbler. And I'm going to teach you how to do that because when we were at the boat show last week, they were giving away the oddest sort of assortment of things. But one of them was all these Louisiana style uh, fish fry and jambalaya. And one of the things that's new to them is the uh, cobbler mix. So we had several bags of this cobbler mix. So we're going to go to the produce market and see if we can get some blackberries or something like that and make a good fruit cobbler. So I'm going to teach McKinley how to bake today. Oh, here we go. Um, nothing real fancy, as you can see. Matter of fact, I even had a couple extra little strips there, which is fine. Um, keeping it nice and lightweight. This is, you can see, this is just eighth inch thick. I don't even think it's quarter. I think it's eighth. Um, fiberglass. And, and even on the sides here, you know, small gap there. But when I wrap this over the side with the glass, that'll be fine. Yeah. That shall work. It'll be a nice temporary little structure to put over the top of the hatches. Uh, I pitched it a little bit just so that the water will run off. Um, and then on the bottom side, once I get it glassed, I will put a little piece of weather stripping there just because this thing is essentially going to sit on top of the deck outside of the existing hatch frame. Open this up. Oh, we wrapped her? Yes. Too many raptors. Oh, yeah? Is that all dinosaurs? Yes. Oh, my gosh. What do you think of that? Oh, my ra raptors. Man, this thing opens up, and look, you have like a little scene of the dino world. Oh, my What do you tell Miss Claire? Thanks, Miss Claire. Hey everybody, I'm over at the storage shed and today I'm going to start working on fiberglassing that hatch that I started. It's actually been about a week later since the last part of this video because I went out of town and I just didn't do anything at all with it last weekend. Uh, with as much time as we spent in the yard, coming back and head to the boat show, enjoying it the last couple of weeks, I um, 
I've opted not to go spending a ton of my time working on the boat. So it's been a nice little respite, and now I'm about to get back to doing the work. First thing I gotta do is move this uh, set of boarding ladders out of the way, pull the table out, and I'm gonna run a first layer of glass over this thing, specifically around the edges, and then I'll do the smooth, uh, the large parts after that. This is our Marquip set of um, uh, parallel stairs. It's kind of nice. As the, as the water level goes up or down relative to the dock, these stay level. Um, so I just need to build a mount for them, and they're nice. It's sitting upside down right now, but they're actually teak, uh, teak steps. So this right here is the, the small frame of the hatch. You might have remembered this from earlier in the video. Um, again, I just did a small, um, I held this all together with epoxy, put small fillets along the edge here. You can even see the gaps in the top. Don't really care about that because when I glass over this whole thing with epoxy, it should be completely sealed. So I'm gonna take a first draft at this and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. All right, so I went ahead and got my first layer on here, essentially just closing up this gap here and then running along the inner edges where there was gaps. So um, once this dries, I'll flip the whole thing over and then I'll put one coat of roving over the entire top. Hello, I'm Ava. Hi, Ava. Hi. What, are you, what kind of animal are you? Are you a leopard? No, I'm a flamingo. You sure you're not a, you're not a white egret? No, I'm a flamingo. Okay. Because egrets aren't even flamingos. Nope, they're in, what color are egrets? Right, what color are flamingos? Pink! Do you know? I'm now getting back to doing a little bit more work on this hatch. So if you recall, I went ahead and essentially um, used a thickened epoxy to glue all the sections together did that earlier in the video. I then did a few um, simple strips um, where the joints were on the inside. Again, I was really just trying to get some of the uh, structural pieces held in place. And now I'm about to skin the outside. I don't really care a whole lot of what the inside looks like. I really did it just for a bit of strength. Um, you know. This is a temporary hatch. I'm going to use it when I take the teak hatch off. I'm going to put this thing down on top of the boat while I might have the teak hatch off for two weeks, uh, rebuilding it in, in the storage unit. So the purpose of this is really to make sure the top is good and, and waterproof and sealed um, so that any rain or wind and whatnot uh, does not get down inside the boat. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lay a fiberglass mat over the entire top. Let me kind of show you what I have because I started this with just this thin quarter inch plywood and a couple of small pieces of trim. That's all I really needed. I was just trying to give it enough uh, rigidity to create a frame and a structure that the fiberglass will then mold over. The fiberglass is really what's going to give it all the strength. I got my little helper with me, but here, you'll love to see this. She's going to lay and watch some movies while I do the work. <laughs> Goofball. She's between some blankets that we took off the boat and have stored in trash bags and a little cover blanket, a, a jacket she's using as a cover. Now here's the hatch. I have it kind of sitting upside down. Let me back up just so you can get a sense for what it looks like, uh, you know, kind of a peak roof style. Um, but what I've done is I added fiberglass right in here. And again, this is really just to help give it some strength and tab the two pieces together. Obviously there's a gap on the back side of this, which I will be filling in in a few moments. And then over on this side, I took this uh, thin trim wood and I basically just glassed over the top and then sanded it fairly smooth. Again, I don't care a whole lot about how perfect this looks inside, but I wanted this top edge to be nice and smooth because that's gonna sit down on the deck of the boat and I'll probably do nothing more than a small little bungee cord hook here down into the um, hatch to hold it in place. Um, I did the same thing right here as well. So here's my hatch shape and again, quarter inch ply, uh, like I mentioned before, this is really just there to hold the shape. And you put, see I did some strips here because I didn't want a hard, um, a hard top here. I'm basically just gonna round the glass right over the top of this. Uh, and that's the way I intend to do it. You know, is it gonna be solid to walk on? Nope, but that's okay, it doesn't need to be. Um, and then you can see here where on the sides, this is that gap I was just showing a moment ago between the uh, the side trim and essentially what is the you know the peak, the roof, the top, if you will, of the actual hatch. And then I'll do the same thing down the side here. Uh, you know, and this is just a small piece of trim wood and thickened epoxy holding it all together. Okay, so here's what it looks like, and you can see I've just put uh, a thick fiberglass uh, fiberglass mat over it. Uh, and you can see I have a little gap here. I'll fix some of this with fairing, and then on the bottom sides, I basically just folded it over a little bit using this foil to hold it in place. It's not gonna be a real tight joint, but I think it's gonna be good enough for what I need here, which isn't much. Yeah, I will tell you, um, I am just not good at fiberglass. And I, um, 
I don't know if it's because I'm trying to do too big a piece. It's certainly cool today. It's like 60 degrees Fahrenheit, so uh, things are a little bit thick. I, I'd probably be better off trying to heat it up a little bit. Uh, that sh that's within the range, uh, the temperature range for West Epoxy. It's just making it a little bit harder to work with. So uh, not great. I will tell you, it's just not, um, I I'm not overly proud of the way this ultimately looks. Uh, but I've kind of decided that it's a temporary thing. I intend to use it for a month, month and a half, and then it's getting tossed in a dumpster somewhere. Uh, it's really just for me to try it out. And frankly, what I'm realizing is when it comes to fiberglass work, that ain't me, man. That just is not me to quality work. So maybe practice will make, uh, I won't even say perfect, maybe practice will get me better, but right now it's pretty rough work. Uh, functional, yes. Beautiful, by no means. <laughs> It's the next day. I've come back to the storage unit. I want to see how the fiberglass looks that I did yesterday. So let's uh, take a look at what it looks like. I've not touched it at all yet. So what you're going to see is where that foil, I had kind of held everything in place with the foil. We'll see that. We'll see how hard it is to take apart. Let's check it out together. All right, here's the piece. And you can see I had this side, if you recall, I just kind of pushed it on there to hold this against the, the wood. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. And then on this side, I did something very similar and I wedged it with some cups and a piece of wood there. So my guess is this is probably going to be stuck on it and I'll have to work at um, how to take it all apart, which is going to be a challenge. So I just used the router um, to quickly trim some of that stuff off the edge. Uh, I gotta tell you, I need to start working out more. I've put this router up and down on that top shelf a number of times by lifting it up over my head. And for whatever reason, this time I got it up there and it dropped. <laughs> so uh, luckily nothing got damaged and I didn't hurt myself. But um, anyway, I am now going to show you what this looks like. Uh, really rough trim and I'm going to use the uh, sanding disc and, and 80 grit just to try and knock it down. I should use about 36 grit. I just don't have any handy so I'll use what I have here. All right so here you go and along the edge you can see I use the use the router actually I got a little nick in it right there but it's trimmed pretty close to the edge it's a little bit of an overhang which is fine and you can still even see where the foil is stuck to it but the idea is it's a nice smooth edge and I'm gonna end up putting a um, a uh, piece of weather stripping along this so when it pulls down onto the flush onto the deck this part ends up being waterproof um, and you can kind of see the same thing over here I'd still have some of the the uncured fibers uh, I'll run another coat of epoxy on this and round the edge when I fare the whole thing not overly concerned with how well that part looks um, but in the end the surface is is good and solid uh, you know I don't think I want to stand on it but it's uh, it's certainly good enough I have a little bit of air in here didn't do a great job on that section when I um, ferret I might just put a little bit of epoxy on that as well just to improve it a bit but all in all it, uh, it looks good it'll work for what we need it for so I went ahead and used 80 grit sandpaper I sanded all the edges uh, down on it um, just smooth to the touch so there was no fiberglass you know sharp edges on it um, and it's smooth enough that I, I could ultimately put a layer of paint on it if I needed to but there were a couple of sections where I still needed to do work too specifically the inside what would ultimately be what you see when you look up at the open hatch uh, the underside of the inside of the hatch um, I didn't glass that so I wanted to get some epoxy painted on that basically just to make it waterproof any you know humidity or anything like that it doesn't get in this since I've only used uh, eighth inch Luan thin plywood not gonna take much to rot that stuff I mean you know, it may as well be compressed cardboard um, so that's kind of where I left and then there was also one section the mahogany sort of a-frame piece on one side I didn't put fiberglass mat on it um, I kind of ran out of mat I had woven but I, that would have been really tough to form over that um, edge because it's only half inch thick so what I, ha I had some surfboard cloth uh, surfboard cloth is a very pliable very flexible very thin weight uh, fiberglass cloth it's really good for making um, smooth finished edges curving around tight edges uh, you don't have to sort of cut it and piece it together like you would if you were sewing canvas almost um, and that's what I went ahead and used for this very last section 
I was scraping the very bottom of the barrel with all of my stuff. I actually ran out of, of, of 205 um, hardener. I had a little bit of 207 or 209 special clear. I don't remember which number it was. Uh, and I needed two pumps to do this last piece. So I went ahead and used that. And as I was doing it, I got the very last of my resin as well. So I'm going to have to resupply here with resin and hardener. But it was enough to let me get this piece of cloth on here. So let me show you what this looks like. Uh, so this is the side that I went ahead and put the surfboard cloth on. And just to give you an idea what this stuff is like, this is it. You can see just how thin, just how pliable it is. You know, you can you can darn near fold it over on itself, um, which is helpful when I got to this edge here, where I'm folding up one side of this piece of mahogany over the edge, which is half inch thick, and then down the other side. When I did it on this side with the heavier mat, it was a little bit harder to do um, and didn't necessarily get it close or tight to the wood like it did on this particular piece. Um, and I went ahead and let it overlap on both the inside and the outside. Um, and then the last thing I did was I just sort of painted the entire surface down here on this underside of the hatch with epoxy, just so that everything is sealed up, no wood is exposed at all, and now it should be completely waterproof. So let me back up here a little bit. So I'll let this dry and we should be set to check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. It's going to get to be a little bit of a hectic time here. Um, I am heading out of town tomorrow morning for business till Wednesday night. I get in late Wednesday night. Uh, I'll be home Thursday. Friday, we're actually going to pack up the camper and we are going to pick um, Chaz up from school right after school and we're going to head out of town. It's going to be nice to, to get away a little bit uh, and spend some time together. So we're doing that next week, which means I basically have Thursday to try and finalize this. Um, so I'll let this cure tonight. Uh, I might see if Deb can come by and sand it. If not, I'll sand it when I get back maybe early Thursday morning and I'm hoping I can wipe it all down with acetone and at least get one coat of top coat paint on it. Um, that should be enough. I'd like to be able to get that done before we head out of town on vacation, at least one coat of it. Um, so I think, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. At that point, this should be done enough for what I need for the boat. That will allow me to cover up those open hatches, pull the teak hatches off, and I can bring them in the shop here in over a week or two or three, actually completely disassemble them. I need to remove all the teak and the caulk sealant on them, um, save all the teak, because I don't want to essentially build them with all new teak, and then I'm going to have to rebuild the core inside of them. The frame is good and the teak is good. It's the, it's the plywood core that leaked over time in the seams, and it, that core is just shot. So what's happening now is when it rains, it comes between those seams, and, and it kind of soaks through that, uh, that core. So this will give me you know, kind of brand new hatches again, um, and, and it's going to be a good way for me to practice on how I actually do teak, uh, teak deck seaming as well. Not that we're doing it on the boat again, but I do like the way it looks with accent pieces on the hatches, on the companionways, uh, and maybe we even would do some accent pieces on the top of the coach house roof. Deb would really like to do that. So with that, I'm going to head back out of town. I'll see you guys shortly in this same video a couple of days from now when I do some final sanding and put a coat of top coat paint on this and show you what this finished hatch looks like. I'm on my way back from the airport. I just got back in from my business trip and I'm going to swing by the storage shed real quick and check on how that last coat of fiberglass went on to the hatch. If you recall, I did the uh, surfboard cloth on the last section and I epoxied the inside of the lid. I'm going to give that a quick 80 grit sand and then I'm going to go in and ferret uh, real quick today. I want to get one coat of fairing on and sand it so that I can get it painted tomorrow. That's my goal here and that should wrap up the temporary hatch project. I'm a couple of blocks from there, so give me just a minute, and then I'll open up the door and show you how that last bit of fiberglass looks on the hatch. All right, so here's what it looks like, and you can see the inside looks nice and smooth and shiny. I just painted that with epoxy. Then, as you can see, here's this uh, here's the surfboard cloth, and you can definitely see it's uh, it needs to be sanded a little bit and fared, but I've got these couple of rough edges here, so I'll just sand these up a little bit, and I think we'll be all set to give it a go. There she sits. So I think I've mentioned a couple of times in this project, this is really more about function than it is beauty. Um, so, and thankfully, because like I said earlier in the video, I am just not good at fiberglass work. I, maybe I don't have the patience for it or something, or I, I know that this is temporary, so I'm not caring as much as maybe I would otherwise. But what I've done is I, I've just gently sanded this down on this side, and now I'm gonna get my fairing compound out. And I'm gonna apply fairing compound to this. I'm gonna use a spatula, mix it up, and then I'm gonna uh, scrape it very gently across the top so that I get this whole thing um, covered up real quick and then I'll sand that. The good news is this fairing compound, in, within an hour I should be able to start to sand it again. So that's the good news. Now you can see here where, you know, I didn't have the cloth go right to the complete edge here. It's covered with the epoxy, but it's certainly not, not beautiful. And you can see these different color little lines right here. 
that's because those white spots are a little higher than the other spots below it just from the sanding happening same with on the top it has this sort of funky look of the mat but some of it's higher than other spots all right so i have fairing over this whole thing and it should be ready to sand in just a little while i'll come back and give it a quick sand over before i put a first coat of paint on it Okay, so I now have the, um, the item here sanded. I sanded it all down with 80 grit and then went to uh, one quick coat of 220. While it looks a little patchy, that's because the low spots are filled with the, the, um, the fairing compound and the high spots are not. And then I kind of shaped this top a little nicer where I had those separate little pieces of wood underneath the glass earlier. Here's what it looks like with the very first coat of um, top coat paint on it. And again, I only did one coat so far. I didn't even put a primer down on this. Again, not great, but uh, it's going to absolutely serve its purpose. I'll need to come back and do a, a second um, coat for sure. If I get down kind of close, you can see you can see the imperfections in it. But all in all, um, you know, I'm not too disappointed in the way this looks. Yeah decent. So tomorrow morning, I believe just before I go to work, I'll come by, I'll put another coat of paint on this. This morning, I'm going to go ahead and test out the hatch and just see how well it fits on the boat uh, in the better light. I'll show you what it looks like. So I think we're all set. I have one more coat of paint to put on it, but I figured I'd give it a shot now. Put the last coat of paint on it while I head out of town. So the entire purpose of making this hatch was so that I could remove these T catches and completely redo them. You can see here how the seams are just shot and unfortunately over the years it rotted the core inside of these. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off and see how well this cover fits. So there we go. These things fit um, just like I wanted. I have a small gap below them uh, that will let in some air if I want. But uh, yeah, this will be perfect. That'll keep all the weather out. I'm just going to go put another coat of paint on it. But yeah definitely what I needed. But this wraps up the hatch job. I mean, this is going to be enough for me to um, take the teak hatches off, apply this down over the opening for the few weeks when I need to go ahead and rebuild those teak hatches. And don't worry, there will be a video on how we rebuild those as well. And I'll be learning it right here with you. <laughs> Safe sailing, everybody. Hope you do enjoy this. If you do enjoy these videos, do us a favor, give it a thumbs up, like it, and share it with your friends on social media. Bye, y'all.